today I'm going to visit the Stasi Museum. As you can see, it's very much in uh, East Berlin. I think it was the uh, government, not government, Stasi offices that were going back in the GDR days. So I'm not quite sure what to expect. It does feel very menacing around here for some silly reason. <laughs> okay, I think that, yeah, there it is. I'm just seeing the sign. Welcome to the Stasi Museum. Okay, right outside there, quite a lot of displays. Um, looks like the late 80s and the lead up to the fall of the Berlin Wall. I'm here, here on uh, opening time, so. Uh, doesn't seem to be a massive queue, so I'm going to head straight in and I'll look at this lot later. Why does this look familiar? Did this feature in that show, what was it, Deutschland 87 or something? Just looks familiar. This is just an information panel outside uh, House 22, as it was called, which was the office's canteen and conference room. What's interesting to know is like, um, Hodgson's and Halsen, the prison. Basically this whole area is controlled by the Stasi. So I'm standing in the middle of the courtyard by House 22. The focusing doesn't want to focus. Why doesn't it want to focus? Anyway, I'm by 22. Behind me is the Stasi Museum. That way. Basically this whole area was Stasi controlled. The Stasi archive over there. That's why it feels a bit creepy in here. <laughs> this is all Stasi. So this is a model. So currently in there, which is the museum, number one. Which is the main, what's it called? Well, the leadership are based here, basically. So you can see the size of the whole site. So House 22, is that one. And the flats behind it. 16, 15, 16. Main administration, reconnaissance, espionage in the West. <laughs> okay. Look at that size of that one, number 15. That's espionage in the West section. Look at it. Jesus. Uh, 47. Post inspection. Securing traffic. Anyway, you can see the size of the place. This is the main entrance hall. I'm going to change perspective a bit. There we go. So this was uh, the entrance hall to the main office, which is where all the leaders would come. And these are the original flags that were left here. So this is a prisoner transport vehicle. This is the kind of thing they would take people off the streets in. They would be um, painted in bakeries and bakery and butcher livery and flowers and all the rest of it. What a nice pretty curtain. Um, I vaguely see the writing on it but, but you can see there's just dark prison cells. I think there's five if I remember correctly from yesterday. Uh, and awesome. but the, um, the thing that's just so creepy is how when they uh, put them in the vehicle, they will drive them around for hours to disorientate them. But they're only actually taking them a couple of miles away. Cafe sign. I think these are kind of two lifts, two person lifts. with information of old photos which the odd the odd bit of memorabilia but uh, not very exciting yet some scary photos there so that's uh, 17th of June 53 that's Dharma plus 
see the station. Sign there. There's a great photo here from Bratislava. August 68. Never seen that before. Spring gun. I thought it was on the ground, it was mounted on the fence. There's a better view, house 22. This, this is a map showing uh, collaborators, conspiratorial flats in Berlin. <laughs> First really creepy thing here. So this was the door put into somebody's uh, apartment and it wasn't discovered until they renovated in the 80s. I think it said 17 years. Correction, 17 years after the fall of the Berlin Wall. So that's in the 2000s. A bug installed in the, in the door with batteries, Duracell. Look at that. So they've spied on for years without realising it. Just to show you couldn't trust anyone. This uh, imitation red suitcase belonged to Eric Milker. He kept incriminating documents about uh, Eric Conacher, just in case. <laughs> so it also had, what did it have? Um, yeah. It had files dating back to Nazi period that concerned a trial against Eric Conacher and other members of the Communist Party. <laughs> this is really good, this uh, radio. The white markings are the safe East German radio stations. So basically, if you could see the dial, you knew the person was listening to a forbidden channel from West Germany. is off his desk and you'd have meetings here. I keep seeing these tapes, I'm wondering if everything was recorded. Either way, this is where he uh, resided with direct phone links to many people on his own switchboard so he could phone who he wanted. This was the casino as gold because this is where they hung out after conferences and during meetings or in the middle of meetings. This is the main meeting room, conference room. I do love these panels though, you can multiple maps attached. Brainwashing kids from an early age, lovely uniforms, membership cards, and badges. Then they progress to the FDJ. It's kind of a youth organisation. Youth books, propaganda books. Military Education Reservoir of Knowledge. It's a 1978 book. It's a tenth of readers. And a hand grenade that they would use at sports to practice throwing. <laughs> Listeners, look. So, this is the uh, bugging camera equipment that they had. Oh, this one. So, so that's the bug. They could hide it in, in the uh, power socket. So you wouldn't 
need batteries. Here's some typical bugs. Here's some hidden cameras. It's a radio. It's a thermos flask with a camera. It's a belt with a camera. Is that a wallet with a wrist bag? It's a top. Handbag, I think. Is that? Shopping bag. There's examples actually. But now we come to the really good ones. So this is a really expensive single lens camera but this one I love infrared so that's an infrared array hidden in a car door have a thin uh, barrier over it that's what it looked like it's amazing this is a spy hole camera. Well, this is the device steamer to open envelopes. What's this uh, oblique light? So you could check for code. Parcel probe, an X ray machine. This shows how the filing is kept on, on everybody. This is a book. Um, every let's say every apartment building had one person whose job was to monitor comings and goings of everybody, visitors, everybody had to sign in and out, and volunteer assistants of the DVP armband and ID badge. So they supported the police to check people's personal data, make arrests and hand suspects over to the police. There are 170,000 uh, in 1989 when it was uh, the wall fell. And here we have an um, index card system, that's the original one, used to keep track of people and whether they were good at giving information or not. View of the samples kept in a jar. And then this is the uh, chair for photographing new people for interrogation. So the panels outside obviously um, explain the history of the revolution here up until the uh, fall of the wall, all the protests that took place, all the demonstrations, all the arrests, but how eventually by the end of uh, 89 the protests, or the protesters just outnumbered the authorities and they st stood back basically and then within a I think within a few hours, the famous um, news conference where the, I think the guy was asked about the movement of people across the border, across the, the wall I mean, and he famously, somebody asked him, when does this come into effect? And he pretty much shrugged and said, I suppose immediately. <laughs> and then the wall fell. 
fall off the wall. Great photos here. Now here is the archive, which I think if you're German of a certain age, you can come here and see what uh, the Stasi kept on you. <laughs> it's like the National Archives in Kew, perhaps, but uh, obviously a little bit more sinister. Here's the view from the other side, Magdalena Strauss, Magdalena Strauss. So all these buildings, including the tower block, I think it's as far as the tower block, so the white building at the end is not part of it, but the rest is part of it. 